Hey YouTube, it's me Jim the Giant. So recently I watched a video from Nick Drossos talking about uh, fear and self-defense and how to overcome it. And one way he said to overcome it was through training, which I 100% agree with and I thought this would be a good opportunity to share one of my own uh, self-defense experiences. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, who are new to the channel, um, I, uh, I weightlift, primarily powerlifting uh, style, but I also do a bit of strongman stuff and a little bit of hypertrophy stuff here and there. And I also do HEMA, which is Historical European Martial Arts. Uh, so um, in HEMA, what I mainly focus on is one-handed sword, two-handed sword and uh, quarter staff. Uh, one of the arguments I hear from people whenever I talk about this is, well, that's completely useless in any kind of self-defense situation. Um, firstly, if that was true, I don't give a fuck. It's really fun, and that's primarily why I do it. But it's also not, uh, it's also not true. There are a lot of transferable skills which you can learn from it, such as judging distance, timing, footwork, all of those kind of things. If you're very, very good at using a weapon, you're also going to be at least semi-competent hand-to-hand as well through learning those kind of skills. But I had had a couple of classical pugilism lessons. Classical pugilism is, is basically what the MMA wishes it was. Uh, so it's MMA, but with even less rules. But I only had two lessons in it, but it did turn out to actually be quite useful on this one fateful day. So... I was walking back home at about half past one um, in the morning, just got back from a lesson. I'd been training for about four hours that day altogether, including my weightlifting and the martial arts. I was pretty tired. I was carrying a 20, um, probably about a 20 pound rucksack or something like that. So running wasn't really uh, much of an option. Um, but yeah, saw three guys on the other side of the road. They're about 20 or 30 feet ahead of me, uh, talking like complete utter chavs. And, you know, at that distance, I thought, well, you know, this situation could escalate, in, could escalate into something. So, you know, let's keep mindful of their presence. Uh, they were quite young, to say late, late teens, very early 20s. So, you know, they weren't as um, well-developed as... Uh, they certainly weren't anywhere near as well-developed as me individually. I'd say they were all between sort of 5'9 and 5'11, uh, probably between 170 and 190 pounds. Um, so if it was just one of them and they started on me, I probably would have uh, fallen on the floor laughing. You know, there's quite a noticeable size difference bet um, between us. I've got quite a lot more uh, combat experience than any of them. Probably more combat experience than all of them put together. Uh, but with three of them, yeah, potentially that could have been a bit of that could have been a bit of a problem. A couple of years ago, back before I started training, I probably would have walked around the block to try to avoid them or something like that. But um, I decided against that in this case. I thought, fuck that. You know, I'm not walking a mile out of my way just to avoid, uh, you know, just to avoid uh, three people who haven't even demonstrated that, you know, they're willing to uh, cause me harm or anything like that. So, yeah, it was a pretty unlit road, no one else around. And in, um, if I did decide to run, um, then there's a fairly good chance of them catching me. There's three of them, the chance of at least one of those being faster than me is fairly high, especially considering I'd been uh, working out so much that day, and especially considering I was wearing a heavy rucksack at the time as well. Um, so I just thought, well, I'll just carry on, and if I do end up in a confrontation with them, I'm going to have to sort this situation out. Um, so we carried on walking, and um, so they are about 20-30 feet ahead of me on the other side of the road, walking uh, walking the same direction as me, and um, carried on, I was walking a little bit faster than them, you know, not because I was trying to avoid them and going far, just because I'm naturally quite a fast walker, and there was a turning coming up on my right. So um, I was um, catching up with them. And as I um, as I went across the road, which is turning over to the right, so I was carrying straight on. I noticed that they were um, crossing over the road, and they ended up and they ended up behind me. 
Um, at that point, I wasn't sure whether or not it was just an innocent situation of they're going to carry on going, um, you know, crossing over that road, or are they actually trying to follow me? So I kept my kept mindful of them. I kept looking. I kept looking uh, straight on, you know, as if I'm paying them no attention whatsoever. But of course, I was paying attention to them. I was uh, using my ears and trying to uh, hear where they were from their footsteps. So we carried on going, and um, then I heard I heard footsteps um, increasing in speed, coming up directly behind me, and um, formulated a little plan at that point. So. <clears throat> I basically just let them carry on. I let them carry on behind me, listened for the where they were, judged their distance as well as well as I could, and when they got to about uh, four um four or five feet behind me, I simply did an about turn and went straight into a pugilism guard like that, and my fist ended up about an inch away from the other guy from um, the guy's face who was uh, chasing after me, and he backed off a step. So yeah, I don't think he was expecting that. As um, he was expecting me to be an easy target, but no, that was that was not going to be the case. Um, I suspect they might have also misjudged just how um, just how big I was from um, because you know when they were over the other side of the road, there wasn't really any frame of reference to see um, to see how big I was. So they probably assumed I was about their size. When they got a bit closer, obviously they realised that I uh, did end up dwarfing them uh, by a fair amount. So, yeah, span around into the classical pugilism guard, fist about an inch away from his face. He backs off. Um, so by that point, yeah, I think they probably realised that they made a little bit of a mistake. So. Of course, I was shitting myself as well to some degree. You know, there's three guys. There is a there is a strong possibility things could have ended up uh, could have ended up badly for me as well. But mentally, I just I treated it um, like it was another sparring session. You know, I've had I've sparred thousands and thousands of times now. I know what to expect. I know what attacks can come from what what direction and at what range. I know how much damage each attack um, could possibly do, and so I just stayed very mindful of my training and tried to not let any doubts uh, slip in. Like I said, a couple of years ago in that situation, I probably would have just ran away like a little bitch. But I thought, no, I'll I'll confront um, I'll confront these people if they're going to, if they're going to come up to me like that, um, <clears throat> and it ended up it ended up working uh, working pretty well. So at at that range, I was um, I was I was looking at them. Um, the things I was keeping mindful of was the position of uh, the position of the three chaps. One of them was right up in my face. Uh, the other two were about six or seven feet back, so uh, they weren't any um, they weren't any current threat. Uh, but of course, have to stay mindful of them as well. You know, with the size difference there and the fact that um, they didn't appear to be um, particularly well trained, I knew that the only real things I had to worry about were strikes to the head. And the possibility of one of them pulling out, uh, pulling out a knife or something like that. So kept, um, you know, kept wary of where all of their hands were, whether or not they were going to reach back or anything like that. I had my centre line covered, so I knew that the only attacks I really had to worry about was a left hook or a right hook coming around and hitting me to the side of the head. Any any jab or straight, I could have simply deflected like deflected like that, and if I got any um, any strikes or kicks to the um, kicks to the body or legs, I could probably I could probably take those hits, and that would leave them open to a counter attack right in the nose, um, and you know, that was basically how I was going to deal with the fight. Um, other aspects of my training I had to remember, such as how to fight multiple opponents, uh, techniques to uh, for not allowing yourself to get surrounded, how to end the fight, um, ending the fight as quickly as possible. Because when you're in a situation with multiple attackers, uh, your stamina is going to run out far quicker than theirs because you're going to have to be keeping on going the whole time 
Whereas if only one or two of those people are fighting at any given time, uh, they're going. To, one of their stamina, one of their stamina is going to uh, come back uh, as um, as the other one's fighting and as they're resting. So you do have to end the fight quite quickly in a, in a situation like that. Not use any um, any energy unnecessarily. So that those are the things I, um, I was keeping mindful of. If it did come into a, a full blown brawl, I yeah I think I would have stand a pretty uh, pretty good chance. Because if they came into grappling range, I've got a big size difference. I've got some judo experience as well, so I think I would have been able to handle the situation quite well. I didn't let any doubt slip into my mind, but stayed completely focused, um, completely aware of uh, where all where they all were, etc. Uh, yeah, I think I stood a pretty good chance. So once we're in that range and confronted with each other, um, that's when they that's when it basically just end up with them just shouting at me. Um, nothing really to worry about there. The only thing I particularly uh, regret is that I couldn't come up with any witty one-liners at the time. I think that would have been fucking awesome. But um, you know, from a self-defense situation, it went it went very well. Um, none of them wanted to make a move. Um, I think they could see that I certainly I certainly had a range a range advantage. I wasn't really leaving any vital targets exposed, and you know I think they could probably see that I could have just smashed them all into the pavement uh, quite easily uh, if it came to it, just due to me being you know 50 pounds heavier than them and you know three to six inches taller um but yeah that all came that all came through training um confident um the confidence treating it just like it was um like it was any other sparring match you know being completely aware of my surroundings those are things which um you know the, um and not letting any doubts uh, doubt slip in these are all things which i was able to do through training and yeah a couple of years ago it simply wouldn't have ended up like that. Um, so yeah, after the after the shouting was done and everything, um, and then his friends, um, the friends at the back, basically telling the other guy to leave it and stuff happened. The other guy was um, basically trying to stand his ground um, as well at that point. Um, but after that, one of his friends at the back ran forward. I thought the guy was coming after me. I thought he was just going to throw a wild uh, right hook or something. So. I simply, I simply sidestepped, had my arm, um, had an arm up ready to block, and had the other arm, um, and was getting ready to just deliver a, a right hook to the side of his head and knock him on the floor if it came to it. But that didn't happen. The guy wasn't coming, um, coming for me. He ended up basically just grabbing his friend instead and pulling him away. And the guy's basically just pissed off. So I stood there for a few seconds, made sure that they were actually going in the opposite direction to me and weren't just waiting for me to uh, turn around so they could take me by surprise again and carried on walking home. So yeah, that's uh, one of my uh, self-defense um, um, self defense experiences. If you guys have any experiences like that as well, by all means, leave your comments in the uh, description box or make video responses. I'll quite happily watch all responses made to this video and comment as well. So thanks for watching, comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.